Kia ora koutou, I'm Sean Davis, part of the team at Venture Taranaki, and you're joining us for a special Tech Week edition of Ahead of the Curve, brought to you by Venture Taranaki. Tech Week is New Zealand's largest innovation festival that showcases technology through a series of curated events taking place this week around the country. The theme of Connecting Our Future acknowledges the importance of New Zealand tech and innovation shaping our future. Using three core pillars, business, community, and education, we demonstrate how connecting our future comes to life. Venture Taranaki is very excited to be the regional curator for Tech Week in Taranaki again this year. The aim is to tell the story of our innovation ecosystem and celebrate the people, technology, and ideas happening right here in our community. We're over halfway through our events this week, so please visit techweek.co.nz to search all upcoming Taranaki-based events. Today we're speaking to Stephen and Gordon from JobHop, a local startup which recently launched a web-based advertising platform for people to connect with businesses in private households who need work done. Recent times have shown us the need to support enterprises by connecting people to access employment. JobHop is all about using tech and innovation to break down barriers and help communities thrive. Just before we jump into the webinar, I'll pass you over to Gordon and Stephen. If you just look at the bottom panel, and what you can see is a chat box. So this is how you interact with all panelists and attendees. So you can write your name in there and where you're from. And also just to the left of that is a Q&A box. So if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, please chuck, uh, put the, your questions in there and we'll get to them at the end. Now over to you, Gordon and Stephen. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Yeah, mo morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us for Tech Week uh, 2020, uh, Head of the Curve, Breaking Down the Barriers to Work. Um, I'm Stephen Reid, this is Gordon Heggie, and we're the co-founders of JobHop. Uh, I'm a director, Gordon is the managing director. Uh, I'd like to thank Sean and Natasha and the team at Venture Taranaki for having us here. Um, and making us possible to be streamed around the nation and perhaps further. Uh, in the early days of our startup, uh, we made an appointment with Zara at Venture Taranaki. Uh, at this stage, we were writing our phone number on, and Gmail addresses on post-it notes, and it's fair to say that not everybody was taking us seriously, and we're fortunate enough here in New Plymouth to uh, have VT, and they did uh, take us seriously. They've been with us since our first formal business plan. Uh, through uh, to the point now. Uh, we got our first uh, training grant of $1,600. At the time, it felt like $16,000. Um, and we're fortunate enough to have uh, VT here. So uh, thank you all. Um, right. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so um, Moving on, we'll reintroduce ourselves. We'll talk about our prior backgrounds uh, as we run through this. We'll talk about the story of how the initial job hop idea came about, the inspirations, uh, teaming up su for success, how you can't sell a secret, the theory of change, um, and how we're using multiple technologies to bring job hop to life. Uh, yeah, and how it works, and we'll play a short video and then finish up with some questions. So. Uh, well, uh, good morning. My name is Gordon Hagey. I, as Steve said, I'm the managing director of JobHop. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of background of where I'm from. I'm um, originally from Scotland. I came out here in 2001, uh, came down to New Plymouth um, as a skilled migrant. I think it was like the year of the samurai, the samurai summer, which was awesome. And um, I've never looked back ever since, to be honest. I've been living in New Plymouth here and it's a great place to live. Um, I've got a plumbing background, plumbing and gas fitting, so I've been uh, working in the trades for a number of years. Um, that's becoming a skilled migrant over here. Um, I've also had lots of ideas over the years, um, and I love the idea of taking an idea from a concept through a process to a product, and then finally to market. So um, one idea, I'll just give you an example, was um, the bread pick, which was a just a simple idea, which was just a, uh, yeah, well, Steve's got one here, actually. Um, it's a uh, bread clip that is a guitar pick. 
So I try to interchange out all the bread clips into guitar picks. And I went through the process of patents and um, trademarks and, and I hold a provisional patent in America for, um, for this uh, invention and I actually manufacture it down in Christchurch, which is quite good. Um, so I'm quite used to this, um, I guess the journey of going through from an invention through to the process. So back to you, Steve. All right, cool. Bye, uh, I'm Stephen Reed, as I mentioned before. Uh, my family moved to New Plymouth in 1983, so I've seen the place go through quite a big uh, change. I currently reside in the Shakespearean garden town of Stratford, home of New Zealand's only glockenspiel clock tower. Um, <laughs> And my work background as a, as a young man, I quote, uh, quoted and sold and installed telecommunications equipment, uh, along with some brief stints offshore and in broadcast and cellular. Uh, I was electrical supply rep from 2005 to 2017. Um, I love my job. I was dealing with electricians day to day. I was supporting my wife and kids, my four year old daughter and four month old son at the time. Um, I was really, really content. I chose to be there. Um, and uh, it was 2015, three years before job hop, and I suffered a clash of heads during a social basketball game. Uh, at the time, I lost what limited coordination I had. Uh, I was quite confused. The other person involved had eye socketed me in the back of the head diving for an errant pass. Um, and anyway, I was feeling bad. They looked worse than I did. Uh, the next day, uh, I woke up and I was incredibly photosensitive angry, off balanced, uh, confused, and I was having trouble speaking uh, or making out discernible words. I had a lot of quite a strong stutter. Uh, I went to work and beat up a computer monitor, uh, which was quite out of character. And apparently, according to the people who were watching me, I was typing on the desk, not the keyboard. Um, and I was frustrated with the keyboard not working. Uh, one of my workmates took my keys off me, called my wife and took me to the doctor. Uh, and that was the day I was introduced into the ACC return to work program. Uh, and these are all kind of key events that led to the inception of uh, job hop. So about 12 months later, it's fair to say I was struggling to get back into my pre-injury role. Uh, ACC sent me to a career advisor, uh, looking at what I could do in an attempt to sustain 30 hours a week. Uh, that was different to what I was doing. At the time, I didn't want to lose what I had because I really loved my job, uh, even though I was having a lot of trouble doing it. Um, so I went through that and then I went to a retraining program and looked at a few places of where I could learn um, some new things, uh, including a computer course that had a room full of young people programming in there. Um, and I was a little bit inspired by that, I would say. And so I started to kind of contemplate my future outside of my current career that I'd been doing for a decade. Um, Confusion and fatigue had led to my compassionate medical dismissal um, due to the fact I wasn't fit to return to my pre-injury role. Um, so I had no job, I had reduced pay, uh, I couldn't no longer support my family on the one income. Uh, so we moved to town to be closer to my wife's former work and she went back to work so that we could make ends meet. I was pretty ashamed, uh, a tad relieved at the same time, I could focus on my health and my future. Um, ACC had recognized my fatigue and gave me the opportunity to look at starting a home business, uh, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for them. Uh, something where I was able to work when I was feeling good and uh, not be relying on me for long stretches of the day. So I went to a startup guy of theirs, he gave me a business plan template and we bounced some ideas. Uh, at the time I wanted to hire garden equipment, I thought that would be a cruisy gig. Uh, so it was 2017, I had spare time. I was running a thousand miles an hour on the inside and on the outside, I was coming across extremely slow. Um, I began reading and watching documentaries on New Zealand and Aotearoa, uh, videos of business personalities and motivational speakers on YouTube, and I was trying to find some inspiration. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's 24 hours in a day don't have a plan B, there is only plan A. Fail and get up, don't be a loser speech is one that was particularly powerful. And Robert Kiyosaki, writer of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you've got to team up for success. Uh, let the accountant do the accounting. Um, and both of these have a strong effect on, on me. So we had, a, we had a friend come to stay at our new uh, residence who had also lost their job and they ended up losing their rental house. And their child stayed with us for a couple of weeks. Uh, and during that time, I wanted to help them 
uh, find some work or give them something to do. Um, yeah, just to try and help them so that they could regroup, you know, but how? And I thought, well, maybe maybe tech had the answer and remember, remembering the training room full of developers, um, maybe I could come up with an app for uh, helping other people um, and uh, across New Zealand perhaps, and we could advertise when people were available. Um, it would need a fast turnaround, be useful productivity tool for businesses, not put up any barriers to getting work or creating poverty. Maybe it could file tax. Um, from the documentaries I was watching, I was aware that there were 250,000 job seekers. Uh, and I thought that was an amazing resource. Um, we would need, if we were gonna build an app for it to scale at least to that size. Um, and maybe we could do other apps for other demographics. Maybe it could be the same app. Um, so why not an app? The guys who started Trade Me did it. Um, helping other people in the community, no plan B, 24 hours a day, should be available when you are, team up for success, let the accountant do the accounting, so find the skills that you don't have, um, and uh, it's gotta be able to scale for job seekers to the uh, minimum, and we needed to re-skin it for other uses. So in the mantra of teaming up for success and uh, having never invented anything earlier, I called up my mate uh, Gordon of Bread Pick fame, and uh, told him what I felt at the time was the biggest secret in the world, an app for helping other people. Um, I said, how would you like to own half a company? But you're gonna have to sell half of that half and I'll do the same to fund this so we can get a team together in the knowledge base uh, to get going. And uh, he told me at the time that you can't sell a secret. And, uh, and so on that we progressed. And so after, after 18 months of, um, Development, uh, meetings, fundraising. Uh, we have here Job Hop, um, and our vision is to break down the barriers to work across New Zealand. Uh, the pillars of the brand of the community, the relationships, the innovation, and the providers uh, and hoppers themselves. Um, as we as we went along this journey um, to bring this idea to life, we were always clear that we wanted to be about helping other people. And an abbreviation of that is where the hop comes from. Um, all we had when we started was a piece of paper with helping other people uh, talked on it in a, in a dictionary and in the internet and we went through it and uh, it just seemed to uh, come back to it. It drove many decisions such as taking on extra costs to allow job hoppers to accept jobs even if they don't have credit on their phones. Uh, it's the core of our business and once we've built a business um, up to a level of increased sustainability. Uh, we'll look for other ways in which we can help others. Uh, we went through a theory of change workshop last year, um, looked at the potential impact of what we were creating. Ultimately, job hop being successful will in result in increased resiliency for both job hoppers, their whanau, uh, and our job providers. This will result in a more inclusive economy. <coughs> So I'll, I'll take you through the, the actual application and, and what we actually do. So, so ultimately, the available workforce needs an easy way to earn money quickly. Many people are limited by health conditions, family commitments, or have just been struggling to find long-term work, particularly as we are recovering from COVID-19. On the other side, the businesses need a simple, cost-effective way to meet their labor needs as their workloads change. They may not be able to commit to an employment contract. They may have workloads that vary or, ha um, or have any big projects on. They may have their own post COVID challenges and might be nervous to take on employees and even on a causal, a casual contract. So enter job hop. And here, so we'll just get this slide right. So enter job hop. Uh, we are here to give some opportunity. That's what that's our trademark and name. Um, to people who need some extra income and businesses so they can develop resiliency. Uh, JobHop is a web-based platform connecting individuals to businesses and private households. And the system takes care of the admin, including filing the withholding tax automatically for the person doing the work. So how does it work? So a business or a household loads their account with hours at a flat rate of $25. Then they post a job of one to 16 hours in length and either can make it public or they can offer it to a specific person. 
The job hop platform will then match an individual with the work so the business has a short list of suitable people at their fingertips. The individual accepts the work and is given the address for the shift. The work is done, the payment is made on the same day, often arriving within an hour of job hop sending it. A small fee is deducted from job hop, uh, from the job hopper, sorry, to cover the cost of advertising themselves on the platform. So all our invoices are automatically generated between the parties with the withholding tax being filed to keep the admin to a minimum and to prevent a surprise year end tax bill for the job hopper. So before COVID-19, we've got some stats here that we were running on. Um, there were large groups of individuals seeking work both on and off the benefit. And I guess I don't have to tell you these numbers have changed drastically and represent a higher need than before. Um, again, pre-COVID-19, there were over 500,000 businesses and over 1.7 million households in New Zealand. Uh, those who have survived the downturn will need to take extra care with their finances for the unknown future, but still may have work they need to get done. So how is JobHop a tool for businesses? So JobHop being a tool for a business as they recover into the future, we provide a 24 seven access to short term workers. A business doesn't have to work within the confines of labor hire office hours. There's a flat rate that is prepaid, which allows them to control their spend right down to the hour. And with only a one hour minimum charge, it's easier to manage. We don't charge commission on direct hires and if they find someone they like, or they might want to bring onto their team, um, that's free to do so. And we see that as a success for JobHop, um, as it contributes to our mission to breaking down the barriers to work in New Zealand. We work to keep the system as simple as possible to reduce the admin for users. So saving time and gaining productivity. So JobHop saves a business time, as they can jump on there and jump on the app whenever it suits them and post up a job. They don't have to pour over dozens of CVs. If they just want someone helping them, let's uh, give an example for somebody maybe, um, maybe needs to hold some jib on a building site there for a builder for the day or put up jib. Um, the rate of $25 translates into a hopper being paid a gross rate of $21.50. So more of your payment makes its way to the worker. And, um, uh, we've done some research and we believe it's cheaper than most agencies. So using job hop means that your skilled workers can spend time on the skilled work and job hoppers can be sought when skilled workers need assistance. Um, so let's say you're a construction contractor. Um, I mean, I can take it from a, at a plumbing company and if I was going to get somebody a hand or get a hand for a day, then I could get them in for that $25 and then put a margin on there just in like normally how it would work in uh, that sort of business. So it could increase your profit. Okay. Um, so as we built the app and for it to be profitable, um, we looked at many ways that we could aut uh, automate uh, the process. So when the hoppers and providers use the system, their identities are verified by a third party tool. When a hopper is offered a job, they can choose to receive a text to notify them that allows them to accept a job quickly. Um, we've worked with the ASB bank um, and to have our transactions automated and all the withholding tax is automatically done as well. We also have a zero integration um, so that all our accounting information is updated regularly. We use a help desk system that not only allows efficient management of queries, but it also gives us data on the tickets that we'd never have by using email. So I guess if you're a business or if you're looking ways that your business can leverage the tech solutions available, uh, make sure you do your research on the tools um, that you select. It may cost a bit upfront, uh, but the time savings it will bring are incredible. Um, I can't imagine if we had to manually reconcile hundreds of uh, transfers daily. So early on in the piece, we looked at how our app could work alongside government departments. So we approached the Ministry of Social Development um, uh, to see if we could get support from them for getting people into work. Um, so I asked them, what would it look like if I turned in 
all the job seekers into sole traders in the country. I think at that time there was like, I don't know, like the beneficiaries, maybe like 300,000 of them um, on, as a, on the benefit. So um, it took some time for them to consider it and it went back and forth um, for maybe a few months. And they said there was absolutely no problem with uh, somebody becoming a sole trader as long as everything's tracked and reported properly. So we didn't want to support the cash economy, which meant uh, being able to file withholding tax for job hoppers as well. So after many discussions and trying to get an inroad into the IRD, that was a mission in itself, but after many discussions with the IRD, um, we've come to an interim solution and we're now setting a president for the gig economy in regards to automatic tax payments. So if your business can benefit or support the goals of a government agency, or you maybe you have some useful data that might help them, it's probably worth having a conversation. Um, I mean, these talks do take time, um, several months, and uh, there will be a lot of work that needs to be done to bring the systems into alignment. Um, but I guess just be persistent and stay in touch along the way. Um, part of our journey, we also had to become financial service providers um, to hold our commercial trust account. And, th and in return for that, we had to be, um, we had to be registered with the Department of Eternal Affairs in regards to anti-money laundering, which led us down to our verification system on our application. So that's, um, that's just a little bit of our history, I guess. Uh, introduces job hop and how it could work for your business, how automating tax, uh, tasks uh, with tech helps us achieve our goal of breaking down barriers to work in New Zealand and keeping the purpose central to our strategy has kept us on track. Now this morning, this just came to me. This is a, um, I had this made, this uh, little video, and it got sent to me this morning. It does, it is a preview, I did sign it off. So, but I'd like to just summarize with this video um, because I, I think that probably just puts it into perspective of everything that I've just said, so. Hmm. All right, here we go. Now, can you let me know, Sean, if as, as long as the audio comes through on this, all right? It would be good to. Are you a business owner in need of casual staff at short notice? JobHop is an online platform connecting you with hundreds of workers available for work right now. You can book short-term labour at a flat rate for twenty-five dollars an hour. Easily wow. utilise this flexible <laughs> workforce, deal with growth, and streamline how your business deals temporary influxes of work all in just a few clicks. When you register, load credit on your account and post a job. You'll be instantly smart matched with identity verified workers. We call them poppers. You can view their profiles and click to offer your preferred offer to work. That's it. Once the job is finished, the job hop platform automatically takes care of the invoicing and the hopper receives payment on the same day. The system will automatically deduct the withholding tax and file directly with the IRD. And if you decide to offer a hopper a permanent position, go for it. There are no additional fees or binding contracts. Sign up for free at jobhop.co.nz and post a job today. Jobhop, breaking down the barriers to work across New Zealand. And okay, well, uh, thanks about uh, thanks for that. Hey, Sean, do you want to take back over there? Yeah, sure. If, if you can just stop sharing your screen, guys, and then, yep, perfect. Hey, thanks so much for sharing that that story. It's really inspirational, and it's and it's amazing. You know, even you guys have overcome so many different barriers. You know, turning everyone into a sole trader and working with all the different government departments surely could could break you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever feel like giving up during any of this? Um, not really. No, nah, not really. No, we we had the plan A, and everything was a detour system, yeah. and so we just stuck to that and. Uh, got up and we kind of guided ourselves on the no's. Uh, no's were the, oh, I think you learn more from a no than you, what's wrong than you learn from what's right. Because what's right, you generally don't have to fix. And so what's wrong uh, and why not were really key to uh, shaping, shaping us because we just have to ask a different question. You know, and when we get stumped by something that we didn't know, 
uh, we'd be more along the lines of, oh, that's a good one. Um, and then carry off and go and find an answer, make an answer or get somebody oh. else involved who could answer such stuff. So. Yeah, right. Nice. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a bunch of questions come in, so we'll, we'll jump into them, okay? First one here, is there an aim to provide a living wage for hoppers? Yes, well, there's an aim to find employment. Uh, and so in, initially we set our original rate at the living, uh, at the living wage. And so it is, it's, it's achievable. Uh, we could get there now if we put the rate up. We don't want to also scare the, scare the businesses off. So um, the li living wage would be good, but predominantly we're dealing with people who are out of work and who are on uh, in between. Uh, benefits and so we we use the system more for looking for a job so employment yeah yeah it is it is it is absolutely a possibility um, once we get to once we get um na nationwide availability and cash flow really i mean i guess we had we had the prices set before the living wage went up <laughs> as well so um and yeah. i think we're only 35 cents off the living wage as well for that um yeah so we can yeah, what is the right. current living wage at the moment? There's yeah, just 21, 21 50, I think. 2185. 2185. Yeah. So you're very close to that now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we are very yeah. close. Yeah. yeah. It used to be 2150. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> next one here. If a potential future government brings an initiative that sole traders can withdraw up to $20,000 of their Kiwi Saver, which I saw last night, when starting a small business, will this apply to hoppers acting as sole traders? Yeah, Do you seen, think this will increase the number of hoppers? I seen this this morning, and I think it's a it's a national initiative. I think that's what that was put out there. It was kind of it was kind of funny when I seen the because um, they had the example was um, a lady plumber, and funnily enough, I've been plumbing for twenty five years. But they uh, I've never came across a lady plumber. But anyway, she was made um, she was lost her job, um, which again was a funny example because all the plumbers I know are really really busy. Um, so that was a bit, um, when I, the company that I worked for was actually made, I was made redundant. Um, so I actually had to make that step myself of, okay, what do I do now? Do I uh, just go out on my own or, and it was a real, it was like not the best timing for, uh, it was around about the Christmas time when the company shut down. Um, so I went out on my own. So the example that the national party are using as their $20,000 Kind of like actually it's really similar to what my situation was back then uh can they get the twenty thousand uh, dollars hopefully it, it would come down hopefully. to the technicality of sole, sole trading mm. versus owning a company if they make the statement that it's a company that would mean a limited liability registered company mm. so sole trading is not considered a company per se so if if, if the, i haven't read this legislation or the proposal but if it's for specifically a company it would not affect sole traders unless they're specifically mentioned um, it would have to state because they are considered different they are considered different mm. yeah. um so starting a business is always a lot of trials and tribulations um are there any failures you're willing to share with us as as you <laughs> along the journey yeah. Many, many, in particular fundraising, that was the, well, it's not a fail now because we just, we just move on when we get no's, but uh, we went to a lot of Dragon's Den-esque type boardroom meetings full of um, boomers, my, my dad, like my, my <laughs> parents are, God bless them, and, um, and we got asked the same questions, uh, and, you know, we did the things, what's your marketing plan, oh, we're going to leave that up to the marketing guy, what a stupid marketing plan, who does your marketing, oh, the marketing company, nice one we're not getting anywhere here are we okay and so we did oh maybe five six big boardroom meetings for angel investment groups um, and investors in general we traveled around we went to Auckland we went to Wellington uh, looking for funding through these traditional uh, channels of um, people have already made it teaming up and getting a good idea and injecting the cash into it um, but we, we found that most of these startup incubators were more already going incubators and they were looking for de-risked companies to put their uh, capital into and they weren't actually true startup um, incubators. So we've had all of our 
fundraising success came from uh, private citizens and individual people who backed the idea as opposed to any company. So we have no company shareholders. Um, I think um, I think the, the one of the things that I think is probably important, if you're going to integrate with a text messaging service, um, we integrated with it far too early in the piece and it just, and it just cost us it cost us a lot of money that we didn't actually need to spend. Um, so I guess if, it, if I could do something different, one thing is I'll probably have waited six months before I put the text message service into our business because the ones we were locked in, we were paying it. But anyway, that's uh, that's probably one thing I kind of regret. Oh, yeah. And there'll be plenty more failures <laughs> yeah. pop into our heads <laughs> along the way. Um, we, we are not perfect um, people, nor do we have the information of, of everything available. It took, there's 19 or well, 21 now people involved with job hop and um, it's really a, 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 a testament to like you can't sell a secret and idea is one thing but getting it to market um, I've got my inventor friend but then you need lawyers accountants um, intellectual property people graphic designers um, software people front-end developers back-end developers um, and then uh, you need to read policy and what we found in particular is that with the policy that we were going through, you could have spent tens of thousands of dollars on lawyers because no one could find the answer because there was a loophole in the New Zealand regulatory system for gig economy workers and uh, for software automatically sending invoices. Mm -hmm. And so we work closely with the um, di you know, different local and regional representatives of the government uh, to try and find a middle ground that where we went down this road that was, you know, like a, a, a like a road with no speed limit, that we put some restrictions in in place, some checks and balances along the way, and they they really appreciated that. So, yeah, um, yeah. you only you only know what you know. So if, you know that's until you until you mm. there's a lot that's of people right. there that know stuff. So. <laughs> right. Uh, what has regional uptake been like? Any regions getting on board faster than others? Canterbury seems to be going quite well. Uh, Taranaki is by far the jewel of the crown at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of hoppers um, on, on the, as of yesterday, we would have had about 600, um, but uh, it, grows, it grows daily. Our main focus now is providers and getting businesses signed up to use the resource because we've got, New Zealand's got 500,000 businesses and uh, there that took the wage subsidy, for example, and there's about 500,000 available people as well. And so like every single one of those people for the most part can earn about $100 before they lose the security of the benefit or and transition to a 40 our job, but there's not much in between nothing and 40 hours. And so we're trying to bridge that gap um, and look at, you know, raising the poverty line up right across the country by about $100 a week and giving somebody who's on um, an income, they've got to take that gap, the ability to top, top it up to where they can whilst looking for full-time work. Um, yeah. And at the same time, partnering with the ministry uh, and if, if, People, we have an analytics package available to them, and if people would like to share their details, it's voluntary um, with the ministry, and their case manager can help them find a permanent placemat um, or get involved and ring employers about flexi wage and other options that they have, or uh, other barriers to work that they have, like, like uh, PPE and stuff that they can um, do that do that on the side as well. I hope, I hope that answers your question. Okay, yeah. So um, you spoke a little bit about providers, but what, what's your ideal provider for job hop? Well, you are, Sean. Um, <laughs> right, our, our ideal provider is everybody. For, mm. for example, we, we started and we focus on like a handy tool for businesses that need a helping hand, uh, making a workplace more efficient um, by getting a set of helping hands so that skilled workers can do the skilled work and that the kind of like tasks that can be done by uh, people who are, um, you know, are, are there to give a helping hand, just making the company time. Like, for example, there's a massive trade backlog of work because of COVID, because they're, they're a per hour business. They've got 40 hours in the week. You take two months out of the year, you've lost a sixth of the year. And so it's quite, it's quite a bit of your working time, but the workload doesn't necessarily delve down. And say, for example, plumbing company comes up, you've got four plumbers, four vans, well, the only way to increase the workload is to get 
people helping those plumbers and it might be a temporary workload and then it goes back down so they don't want to hire they've got problems if they ramp up they lose their wage subsidy liability ability and so getting those skilled work, work and then again if we've got skilled people on job hop which was not the original aim of job hop but since 200,000 plus people lost their jobs who are extremely work ready qualified um, people that they could do something to find a job by advertising what skills they have doing other work and then but you know like it, the idea it was that they wouldn't be doing this skilled work for the helping hand rate of job hop it's just that the opportunity to showcase their skills would uh, you know we, we would hope that it will uh, lead to you know full-time full-time employment for yeah them. okay most of current job connection process processes are driven by employer so who pays? I love that your system is worker driven. This challenges the system. Has the system fought back? Has the system yeah. fought back? Yeah, mostly in nasty Facebook comments about how it won't work. What a stupid effing idea. Um, and so we, we have well, one comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the the systems fought back in the sense of the time it's taken and um, along along the way we've crossed paths with businesses that see us as a, as a threat uh, you know for example traditional labor hire companies have had a bit of a, wor a worry worry about us where um, they offer a, a premium service for industrial sites and stuff like that they've got four hour minimums they've got break fees if you hire their people um, and they do a lot of additional checks and balances for industry specific stuff that we don't we don't match. And I kind of so, I, I look at the way um, I was manager of um, a reasonably big plumbing firm, uh, mm -hmm. about 12, 14 plumbers there. And we're always getting CVs in the door and I was always like getting people looking for work. And uh, when we're getting busier, um, I would look at taking on some other people. But the time that actually took me to sift through all the CVs, to sit down, have the interview process, get them in, and people can talk themselves up as much as they want. Um, and they can put on their CVs, whatever. But they're really, the proof is in the pudding. So if this system was back then, when I was managing that firm, I'd be on there looking, getting a smart match, getting that person, giving him a day's work, because it's cheaper for me to give him a day's work than it is for me to sit around sifting through all of these and then the time it takes for the interviews. If he's no good, there's what, an eight hour day, um, there, what she say? That's two hundred dollars. So a two hundred dollar investment. There's going to be some productivity. It might not be what you were uh, looking for. I guess maybe not. But then again, on the other side, he could be the best guy out. And you're like, okay, well, let's give him another day. And then you can give him another day. And then we've got one company on there that I think I've used the same guy now for two weeks. Um, so I'm probably looking at that guy's going to get employed by this company. I would say it's a great story for us because that's really what our aim is to get people their foot in the door, almost like a paid interview. And it's cheaper than interviewing somebody. And at least you get some work done as well. So yeah. that's where I'm at. We, we find in dealing with um, people in government too, you get local representatives and they're really good and they're helpful and they want to help, but they're bound by, you know, the fence of legislation as, as, as is every, everybody. And so initiatives, by the time they get pinged around the company and they go to focus groups and boardrooms and, you know, so you might want to get X thousand dollars so that you can help with a service, but they won't give it to you. But they'll spend a hundred thousand dollars on a focus group discussing whether or not they could give it to you. And so, um, yeah, like the pro the process getting slowed down is um, by external influence is more more the biggest uh, holdups that we've we've had. Mm. Okay. Uh, can you see where Hoppers are based to assist that where you can support the local? Yes. yes, it's all about locals, getting local people, local work. The community is is a pillar of the brand. And so you can see now, um, as of last week, uh, we keep changing the innovation. You can see what uh, suburb area they're in. So um, if they're in uh, Christchurch and you've got Christchurch, it might be an hour from one side of Christchurch, you can see what area they are. And so once you've got an hour's credit on your account, uh, $25, uh, 2150 of which is refundable you can uh, post a job for an hour and you can either put it on the marketplace for expressions of interest or you cannot now if you don't you can browse at who's available in your area so say if you see you um, you're in Helensville in Auckland 
you put up a job, an hour washing windows around at my house, you don't make it public, well, you can browse through the hundred or so people in, the, in that area. Um, and so, yeah, local, local people, local work. Um, and then and you, once, once people have accepted jobs, they get their phone numbers and then the human co element comes mm. in and they can talk to each other, rearrange stuff. And um, it makes the, you know, the payments and the booking and stuff very, very simple once, once I've done one job work. Mm. We've got a couple of questions on providers. So um, one is how many providers have you got up so, signed up so far and how do you develop them in areas? And we've got, we've got someone keen um, or happy to assist in wire wrapper. So I'll put you in touch after the webinar. Fantastic. So we've got, we've got about 80 uh, providers on our system at the moment. Um, well, a, a, a few private households, but uh, businesses as well. Um, so, I mean, I guess we've really, Realistically, we've been going live for four weeks now. So, I mean, we're at a very early stage of uh, building up the, I guess, the, the coffers, as we'll say, but the, um, it's, it's an education thing as well. So we're just really trying to get out there and then any help or anything, we're really um, customer focused to help anybody that's trying to get on the system or uh, any problems with that. So, um, which is, I think we've ironed out most of them now. Um, so yeah, that's how many providers we've got. If that's yeah, we simple answer. With our roll rollout uh, in a week, we have our, st our first st our staff uh, people. People are starting. We've got uh, the support, full time support, and the full time development uh, starting, and that's going to give us the ability. We're going to be solely focused on relationships and providers. So, how do we get it? How do we get it out there? Um, well, I'm a big fan of face to face, but we, we've got uh, social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm sure there's other ones. I'm only familiar with Instagram. I've had it about two weeks uh, <laughs> and I, I just signed up to say thank you to somebody who sent 12,000 subscribers of theirs a check this out thing. And I was like, whoa, people do this stuff. I never had Facebook or anything. I didn't want to look at your cat video. And um, and so it was really humbling to go on there and see somebody who had so many connected people do a little, you know, at the time, a better video than we had out um, mm -hmm. after we luckily managed to get on Seven Sharp for a couple of minutes, um, which really from the day before to the day after, it certainly made the uh, a bit more, work, you know, a bit more work in the, a bit more work in the day. Mm. Um, cool. Yeah, it's nice down there in the wide upper. Mm, nice. Um, we have just hit 45 minutes, but we do have a couple more questions. So if you guys are happy just to stick around for a couple more minutes, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. And, and anyone on the webinar that needs to needs to go, um, I'm, I'll send out a recording so you, you won't miss the end of these questions. Um, so what, what are the most common types of jobs advertised? Helping builders, mm. I'd say. Helping tradespeople are the, and cleaning are the number one one. So we've got all of our tasks that we offer are the default rate of withholding tax is 20% or less. And so we've got hospitality work, we've got building site labor, general labor, gardening, cleaning. The forestry, yeah, and, and agricultural. A, yeah, administra administration, right? Yeah. And so you're trying not to sell people at a fixed rate for their skilled, qualified work, right? Just to go on, to give pe to give people a hand and do physical work. And then we've got three levels of mobility from physically um, limited mobility, mobile, and then mobile with good physical strength. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, the most, the biggest ones, cl cleaning seems to be a real big one and helping make trade businesses more efficient or uh, doing administration. I think as, the system develops and we turn into like inadvertently the paid job interview seems to be coming a lot where you book someone for an hour you could go on i want to interview 10 people wow here's 10 people looking for well here's 100 people looking for work they do what i'm looking for maybe i could set up 10 jobs and they're all a job interview and the next thing you've saved yourself hours and hours mm. of work and people come in and there's no strings attached and they even get paid for their for their hassle and then um spread spread off yeah. Okay. Here's a quick one. Do providers need to provide hoppers with PPE or are they expected to bring their own? Well, you can, um, from a provider aspect, you can, when you put the description on there, you can say you need to have boots or you need to have that. So you put that in the description. So if you've got the job there, you just say, this is the requirements that you need. Mm -hmm. um, 
and um, that's basically it. So then that fits in. So if that hopper doesn't have that stuff, then um, obviously um, mm -hmm. there'll, be, there'll be another hopper it does, I guess, that's um, available yeah. for that. But then again, from a ministry point of view, somebody doesn't have a pair of boots and they're coming from a ministry of social development uh, side, which I'd say the majority um, well, this is a good one, would this one. be, then they would go back to their caseworker or their, and say, hey, look, I've got a job here, but I need a pair of boots. You know, so it goes back to them as well, so they can help people into the workforce, which they're trying to do at the moment anyway. So, um, yeah, so. they'll remove the they'll remove the barrier if you're on benefit. So we've got a tick box that says PPE required or not, and then you list list the things out. Yeah. Generally, it's not. We have a whole bunch of health and safety checks and stuff and, and site stuff that they can do off. Uh, predominantly with building sites, they're covered by the contractors. Um, health and safety policy and the and the site policy, and we've got a few check sheets and stuff like that for going around and you know safe, safety is everybody's responsibility so yeah. yeah are you targeting minority groups with this initiative what do you think is the best initiative to ensure uptake across ethnicities um, okay. well yeah we target <laughs> we're targeting every everybody uh yeah but um we, I would say that it's like pretty multicultural from the start to the finish. Our board's, our board's pretty multicultural. Yeah. Um, and yeah, how, how we target them. We need to go and see groups uh, of, from all ethnicities and all, all walks of life. Um, and, but as far, as far as the system goes, we had things like before, before the pre-COVID, we had things where we would have like a, what people's preferred greeting is and what their preferred nickname is. And uh, you know, like how they'd like to be addressed and how they'd like to be met and stuff. And some of it's still there in the background and some of, some of it's not there, but uh, absolutely, absolutely for anyone, like the predominant amount of our hospitality staff, um, you know, from I guess a, a, minor, a minority um, uh, background as far as po populace, uh, it's, a, it's but we're also we're also dealing with um, like choices NZ and idea services and um, mm. places like that because um, yeah, we really want to not discriminate against anybody mm. and give everybody an opportunity. Um, so we're really passionate about that as well. Uh, trying for I don't know if. Uh, disabled is the right word anymore. Limited never, mobility? Can, well, we put it in as limited mobility, but you know, that could be uh, mental health problems as well, you know? Like mm -hmm. Steve was, yeah, I'm good for a couple hours in the morning, and, mm -hmm. but then in the afternoon, I'm absolutely, I can't do anything. So we're really trying to, we're just trying to cover off everybody, really, yeah. that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah it's, gotta, it's gotta be, inclu it's gotta be, inclu it's mm. gotta be inclusive. I don't like the term minority either, because I don't think of, mm anybody is a minority. I understand that there's groups of less populous um, and, this, and stuff like that, but I really want it to be for everybody um, on, the, on there, uh, you know, and, and who we can support. I'd love to get involved with any, any group of people from any walk of life that could educate us in a way that we could make the system more yeah, usable for yeah. them and more accessible. Uh, we'll look at multilingual um, and, and stuff like that moving forward. Uh, but we don't we don't want any bar we don't want a, 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 any barriers for anyone least of all you know ethnicity or group id breaking down the barriers <laughs> yeah for sure like you know and yeah that's brilliant hey yeah uh, uh, there's one question here how can we help promote job pop on social media so you talked about instagram you got facebook do you yeah yeah we've got we've got all of that channels uh, we use a company um, liquid media, liquid here. media um, to help us with that because and I don't, I don't have time to, to sit around and and, and do that stuff because there's so much other stuff going on. But uh, we're definitely going down that channels because I mean that's definitely a platform where, where um, yeah. lots of people view. So um, yeah. we really need to get as many businesses and private households using it um, and, and making your life at home so easy is a real good thing. I had three people there the other day. Uh, they were so you know good to. Uh, get going and so you're yeah, signing up providers uh, and doing it it's definitely going to be involved in the next stage and if people want to contact us um, our details are on jobhop.co.nz and they can send us a message and we'll reply we'd love to talk to them um, and bounce any ideas that you might have mm. great and just one final question for both of you um, so since launching what's been the biggest wow moment so what what's one moment that's just completely blowing you away um, I think when 
for me, it was after all that work, and as I said, we got our first three dollars fifty into our bank account. That was, and yeah. for me, that was like a stop the bleeding for a minute. There. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's such a small amount, but like that was a real cheers moment for me because it actually came that we got the product, we'd made mm. it to this stage, and then we made a sale, and somebody had booked somebody to do a job, and from that, that was the oh wow, that was a great moment for me. Um, I don't know about you, Steve, but that was that, that was kind of like the, well, we did it. Yeah. Just to even get that one three dollars, it wasn't even the. It's not even about the money. It was just more the fact that it went through that whole journey and it's been used and it worked and the whole system works. I yeah. mean, that's a that was a wow moment. I get my kicks at looking from him having a good time about it because he'll be sitting there <laughs> looking all stoked and I'll be like, yeah, he's stoked. Mm, and, so, yeah. It's so it's so complex in the background. There's so many integrations going on. So when that actually when when everything links and it's all working and it all happens, it was like, that's, that's definitely the one moment here. Yeah, 100%. Mm. <laughs> so much work, so much work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that's it. It's gone a little bit longer than we usually do, but it, it was a really, it was real, real pleasure speaking to both you guys. It's a super inspirational story, and I think you've got such a great thing going on here. Um, so thanks, everyone else, for joining us. I'll, I'll make sure to send out the recording, and I'll also send out the Job Pop website and contact details to Stephen and Gordon. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that, that's it from us. Thanks again. Have a nice week, and hi there. Thanks, guys.